Hello viewers, welcome back to Dexter's Tech Lab. This is going to be another video about the Quantel DPB 7001. Now this one isn't going to be about the restoration because we're getting it into a state where we can pretty much uh, have it fully working. Um, I'm now in a position where I can start talking about how the actual machine works. Um, the reason I can do this is with all the knowledge I've gained from trying to fix it, um, has led me to have a better understanding of it and hopefully I can try and explain some of it to you because it is rather interesting. But first I want to thank my loyal patrons for supporting me. Without their support I wouldn't be here making these videos. So if you want to become a patron there is links in the video description. I also want to thank our channel sponsor PCBWay for their continued support. PCB Way can manufacture your custom PCB designs, even if it's short run or production. With an easy to use website to configure your PCB build with all the manufacturing options you could possibly need. I've used PCB Way myself, I know they offer excellent value and service for PCB manufacturing. Maybe you're not ready to design your own PCB yet, but you want to make some projects. Well, they have their shared projects area with thousands of community designs all ready to order. Take a look at their website and find out more. Right, uh, we're going to have a look at some of the um, hardware that's in the Quantel uh, paint box. Um, I found it fascinating and eye-opening learning about this stuff while I've been going through restoring it um, using the service manual. And I've gained a bit of knowledge and I find some of the things in here quite fascinating and I wonder whether you might find them fascinating as well. So I'm going to produce a series of videos um, going into some of the hardware um, that's in this machine and roughly how it works. I can't go into too much detail because my knowledge is limited anyway. Uh, but that just means we'll have nice short little videos. Uh, so if we open up the front panel, I've explained uh, roughly what the cards do before. As I said uh, before, we have the computer cards. Um, these are kind of disk interface cards. We have the painting cards, two frame stores, a combiner, and, and output video cards. So there's a number of these that we're probably going to look at. Um, certainly in this video, we're going to have a look at the combiner card. Um, and then um, after that, we'll probably look at the disk sequencer and disk buffer cards, because they're quite interesting as well um, in how they actually operate with the hard disk. So if I just take out the combiner card, so uh, let's take a look at the block diagram on the combiner card um, and also read through um, its description. Um, the introduction says this card takes the signals from the six frame stores, those are the um, six cards that I pointed out earlier, um, and combines them together in a programmable manner to produce a single full colour output. So what does that actually mean? Um, well, you have to think um, this is running at uh, video rates. This is all running in real time uh, through the frame stores to produce the actual picture that uh, appears on your screen line by line um, in a traditional sort of manner that you'd have on a CRT. So um, what uh, the combiner card is doing is taking uh, data from one frame store, um, data from the second frame store and combining them together uh, to produce an output pixel which is then sent to the output processor card. Now what this allows you to do um, is you can have a, a full screen image um, and then at any point within that image, you can then start combining data from the other uh, frame store. Now, what that means is, in, in essence, is you have a full screen picture and then you can have something floating around on top of it. Um, this uh, is your cut and paste. This is where your paste up uh, works when you have a cutout on the end of your pen. Um, this is exactly what is happening. The combiner card is taking the actual main video data from one of the frame stores and then when it gets to the point where it knows your cursor is, it will then start combining in data from the other frame store which holds the cutout, um, combining them together, um, not just the colour information um, but you also have the key as well. So you have what Quantel call the extension frame stores. Um, the extension is the key channel basically. So 
you can see here we've got luminance 1, luminance 2, chroma 1, chroma 2, extension 1 and extension 2 and they all get combined together to produce the actual final output pixel. So as you can see in this uh, block diagram we've got a number of input channels um, and we have two output channels. The two output channels are literally luminance and chrominance um, and that is the actual um, final pixel value which gets sent to the output processor card which actually generates the analog signal which appears on the actual screen. Um, the inputs um, are the two frame stores. So we have luminance 1, luminance 2, chroma 1, chroma 2, extension 1 and extension 2. The number 1 cards are frame store 1 and the number 2 cards are frame store number 2. So what this allows you to do um, is have a full screen image um, and then at a certain point which is defined by the position of the actual pen um, what the computer card does is take the pen position that comes in from the tablet convert it into a value which is then put onto um, the control bus um, which then sets values for what the combiner actually does. So you'll have a full screen image, um, and then if your pen is halfway down the screen, then around line 200 and something, the combiner card will start uh, bringing in data from the paste-up item um, and combining those pixel values together to generate the final um, output value. So. This has to do a number of things to be able to com come up with that final value. It has to um, combine the two luminance values, it has to combine the four chrominance values and the two key channels. Because not only do you have a key on the actual main picture, you also have a key on the actual cutout as well. So all those things have to be combined together to generate your, your final value. Hopefully you're starting to see how, um, how much of this is hardware driven, um, given that uh, the, the pen actually generates values which are put into registers on this, um, um, on this card. You can see here cursor that comes into the control, so it all gets um, fed in. So this is the actual combiner card itself. Um, there is not a lot on it really when you think about it. Um, it's mostly 7.4 series logic. There's a couple of... Um, programmable devices down here. These large devices on the end are ADSPs 1081As uh, and these are 8x8 multipliers. And it's those that actually do the actual mixing and multiplying of all the data um, to generate your final value. Right, let's get this plugged back into the machine. I'll turn it on and I'll actually show you this happening in real time. Okay, let's fire up the machine. And we can sh actually show you how this actually works in real life. Um, so, as I said, this is uh, mostly to do with the uh, paste up. Um, so, if we go into paste up, um, actually, first let's draw a stencil. So, if we do an airbrush, 100%. And we're going to draw something like that. Just reverse it. Um, and we're going to go into paste up now. And we're going to cut out this part of the picture. So I'm going to just cut that out. And uh, you can see there it's uh, generated the actual cutout. So what the CPU card is doing is taking the input from the pen, it's converting that into a set of coordinates on the screen, um, placing those into the combiner card, um, and then what the combiner card is doing is displaying um, the whole picture in the background 
and then when it gets to the point where it wants to display the um, the cutout it's going through every single pixel um, one by one and actually combining the background which is in um, one of the stores the I think um, the main picture is in store two and the cutouts are in store one so it combines store two with the cutout um, bearing in mind the um, the actual stencil that we have around this cutout as well because you can see how it all blends in it's not just a hard edge um, combining the luminance the chrominance and at the moment we only have one key on at the moment because we have the key that is actually on the cutout now we can actually also have another key if I go back to painting and then draw a new stencil let's just wipe that and I draw another stencil like that I can then go into paste up um, now this is all still working as it was before but if I now turn on use stencil um, this will now use the, um, the second stencil so it all has to be combined together and you can see so you can see here how it's combining um, the background picture with its luminance and chrominance um, we have the key channel of that and then we actually have the cutout itself with all its colour, luminance and key information as well so it's this kind of thing which made Paintbox so versatile um, it, it made it extremely creative for the artists to be able to do things with keys um, it's all about the masking um, and simple things that you can do to say reverse stencil and then it becomes the opposite um, you can see it's a little bit hard to see where the picture is and, and it isn't there but uh, you can see how it makes it very very versatile and it's it opens it up to the imagination of the operator to use all these different things in different ways to create all the weird graphics that the paint box created and of course it's worth pointing out that um, I'm moving this around on the screen it looks all right lovely in real time looks like it's doing loads and loads of processing but literally no data is moving around in memory whatsoever um, this is purely um, a video switching and timing um, thing um, that is actually happening in real time um, and it's it's interesting to think how this kind of thing uh, would have come from Quantel's other work in their um, other products like the DPE 5000 which is their real-time digital effects system um, that was introduced in 1977 I think um, and that used a lot of video switching um, and combining um, circuitry so a lot of that would have certainly gone into um, developing a something like this to use in Paintbox um, because this requires um, almost very little computing power um, it's literally just a timing thing um, it's also uh, worth noting that uh, this is only affecting the output picture it's not changing anything um, on the actual um, data itself uh, when I actually come to stick something down so if I wanted to place this here um, you can see it um, sort of semi stuck down now in this state um, this is still the combiner card doing this so this is still not set into the actual picture if I switch back to painting it disappears in paste up so only in paste up here is it actually um, using the combiner card to combine those two pictures together um, into this one so if I want to stick this down permanently I do stick and what that does it uses a separate set of um, hardware in the, the actual painting functions to actually um, do the same bit of maths and actually imprint it actually into the actual um, original picture data so I hope you found that one interesting a little bit look at the combiner card of the DPB 7001
Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.